Welcome to In the Studio. I'm Matt Blake, and today we're going to be talking about the Bike City Theater Company. And I'm joined today by J.R. Yanker, who is the artistic director, as well as Sarah Marsh Crowder. Crowder. Crowder, thank Sorry. you. Dr. Mm -hmm. Sarah Marsh Crowder, who is, I was so focused on the title that I forgot <laughs> your name, I apologize. <laughs> who is the literary manager, as well as the company Turg. <laughs> we almost got it. Dramaturg. Drama company. Turg. All right. Yeah. Tell me awful. about your title. Let's start there. <laughs> um, I am responsible for um, overseeing the acquisition and uh, management of scripts, potential plays, and pieces of work that we might be interested in doing. I work closely with the artistic director. Um, it helps determine what we're going to produce and why we won't produce something. Also a useful thing to know. Uh, as a dramaturg, I provide analytical support, research support, pretty much any kind of support that a playwright or a director or a production team might need to understand what they need to understand about the play. Or developing new work, oh, which yeah. is very helpful. <laughs> yeah, in developing yeah. new work, it's like I'm a professional outside eye. That's what I do. Yeah. All right, and then for the Bike City Theater Company, tell me more about that. It sounds like you have a good dramaturg, and what else? <laughs> we have a great have? dramaturg. We're very <laughs> lucky. Uh, so Bike City Theater Company, uh, we founded it in 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we're still the new kids on the block, uh, but we are focused on uh, on new work and original work. Um, so we are. Uh, focused on bringing new plays to the public as well as developing our own in-house original work. All right, mm -hmm. yeah. excellent. So 2017, is there a mission behind the theater company? There oh, is, yeah. there is. Yeah. I'll let you chat about uh, the, yes. the mission. Uh, <laughs> we have a trifold mission, which is that we try to we promote community, um, sustainability, and theatricality. Uh, so we believe that we should be deeply invested in our community and draw from it as a resource and also provide material that speaks to it and that can engage in a conversation. Well, that can engage in productive conversation, let's put it that way, with the community. Um, sustain sustainability has a couple of facets to it because sustainability is a really cool buzzword right now. Mm -hmm. You know, people want to talk about things being sustainable, but that's a form of greenwashing. We're thinking about sustainability as in how do we not only produce theater in an, in an ethical way, environmentally, psychologically, how do we pay people? How do we make sure that people are having an experience that's productive and conducive to art making to the best of our ability? So that's the kind of sustainability we're looking for. And the theatrical is just a reminder that we're here to do something that only theater can do which is to engage the senses in a live, immediate, present way. So that would be the mission. We have a nice little tagline that goes with that too, which is expect everything. Expect everything. Expect I everything. I like that very much. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so any shows coming up that you're working on right now? Uh, the next one uh, that folks will be able to see, uh, we have uh, our salon reading series, yes. uh, which is sponsored by the city. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, city. <laughs> thank you, Davis. Um, yeah, uh, we do a, <laughs> a free play reading for the public okay. every month. And, uh, and I believe March 30th is, uh, is Dance Nation. Dance Nation which is a newer by Claire play. Barron. Yeah. So premiered in, uh, I believe, in New York in 2018. Um, it's been getting a lot of buzz around the regional theater circuit. Um, we're really lucky to be able to land it just to do a concert reading of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a tremendous... Um, story that's a little bit reminiscent of Sarah Delap's The Wolves, which was produced at Cap Stage last year. Um, so it's about women and about girls and how do we move through these different phases of life, but it's got a really interesting dark edge to it. Very dark. So very definitely dark. for grown-ups. <laughs> yeah. All right. Definitely for grown-ups. Yeah. Definitely mm -hmm. very dark. And so what sort of venue do you use for the, for the salon? Oh. Uh, we uh, operate out of uh, Repower Yolo's mm -hmm. uh, gallery space. Uh, Indigo Architecture is, is the, the entire building, but that's where Dairy Queen used yes. to be. For old yes. Davis. Yes, for yes. Old, old Davisites, mm -hmm. uh, Dairy Queen. Uh, but now 
now there's a awesome art gallery there, and Repower Yolo uh, is a solar company that operates out of there. Okay. Uh, part of their mission is uh, helping non other nonprofits, and so they um, actually donate that space to us nights and weekends, uh, free of charge. So they're really the the reason that we exist the way yeah. we do. So we're we're super grateful. So if you want to go solar. <laughs> Repower YOLO. <laughs> yeah. And I do believe, speaking of sustainability, I do believe that structure is a hay bale structure. It was fascinating to watch them build it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's a, it is an interesting space and an interesting. Uh, it's a really cool building to be in. Yeah. You know, to see how it kind of breathes and operates in the in the world. Yeah, so. I, th I think it was one of the first zero net energy yeah. buildings in the in the state. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. Fact, so yeah, Indigo does really really cool stuff. And, yeah. That building is awesome. <laughs> All right, so more reason to come out and see a reading. Yeah, at the, yeah. And what is the address? It's on that Fifth is Street. 909 Fifth Street. All right, so 909 Fifth Street. It's right on the tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or right off the tracks. It's not on the tracks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That is excellent. And so that's coming up. Any other ideas or things in the works right now? For we performances? have plenty of things in the works. <laughs> a lot of stuff ideas. in the works. Ideas? You, do you mean schemes? <laughs> Thousands of schemes. Yes, yes. So many. Yeah. <laughs> At any given time. Yeah. Uh, we uh, currently uh, tour of our uh, bike safety musical, Light the Way, uh, is on the road in Solano mm -hmm. County. Uh, that was written by Jade Gregg. And it is... Uh, it's touring Solano schools right now. Uh, this last year, it toured to mm -hmm. all eight DJUSD elementary schools. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that is currently on tour. Uh, there will be a public performance of it coming. Uh, and so look to the website for more information about when that will be. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are also, uh, with the help from the city um, and Solano Air Quality Management District, uh, developing a new school, a new school show, show for uh, for the Davis Elementary Schools that's going to be going out. Um, mm -hmm. So we're developing that right now, yeah. which involves workshopping and, and prepping for that production. Uh, and then we are also uh, <laughs> in March uh, going to be working on a uh, adaptation of Esperanza Rising uh, that is going to be. Uh, at it's based on the novel by Pam Munoz Ryan. Yeah. Who's uh, and it's Esperanza is usually attached to the fourth grade curriculum in California schools, mm -hmm. yeah. so that may be where some people have heard of it. Yeah, yeah. it's a great book. So we are doing uh, a show uh, with young performers at Montgomery Elementary coming up. So oh, we have a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> that's the, and that's the tip of the iceberg. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's also the what we call the big show rather than the main stage. So we're thinking about what the next big show is going to be and plotting out how that's going to operate and where that's going to happen. And then we're also thinking about the big show after that. And right. it's and always that. So you have a history of doing the big show then. Yeah. And since 2017, how many, I don't know if you count big show versus other performances or how you, <laughs> what, what is yeah. your track record? Oh, no, in, it, it, in it, it's, it's dependent on the year and, yeah. and, and, and what we have the opportunity to do and, and what right. we're working with. Uh, so. Uh, our first show that we came out the gate with was Gutenberg the Musical, mm -hmm. um, which is a two-hander uh, musical about uh, two gentlemen who wrote a show uh, about uh, the invention of the printing press. But it's zany. It goes off the tracks. It's not historically accurate <laughs> in, in okay. almost any way. Yeah. Um, super fun. Uh, so that was our first, like, what I would call a main stage offering. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the nature of our, sh our company right now is, uh, is pop-up theater. Mm -hmm. So that show toured, uh, it went to Sudwork, it went to Super Owl Brewing. It Watermelon Music. Watermelon Music, it mm -hmm. performed out back of the Pence Gallery. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's been the nature of a lot of our shows right now is right. that they travel. Yeah. Um, so right. all, we're, go, we're, we're bringing theater to the people. Excellent. Yeah. We're trying to. Yeah. We're, really, <laughs> yes, yes. we're really trying to. And yeah. our most stable productions so far have been the salon readings, which started mm -hmm. in February of last year. Okay. And we've been doing the monthly. This year, we're doing 10 months out of 12. Last year, we did a full 12 months. But then we realized we might like a little bit of a break. Yeah. So <laughs> that one might be nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that we can actually you know, plan yeah. Okay. be effective. Okay, and then as the literary manager, mm -hmm. um, sort of before, so coming into something like a salon reading, mm -hmm. how many things are you reading? How many people are you reaching out to? What's the sort of scope just to make one of those happen? Mm -hmm. Because cutting back to 10 still sounds pretty ambitious. It is. <laughs> so some of it gets sort of gleefully taken care of um, because we promote 
new works and new playwrights, we're able to turn around and go, okay, well, who do we know that's writing good stuff right now that we want to support them? So we've been able to have um, local playwright, uh, I mix up his name all the time, Nicholas Walker Herbert. You got it. You got, <laughs> <Yeah>. you got it. <laughs> okay. Um, and we were able to do a set of t his 10-minute plays this last summer for one of the readings. And uh, we have one of our company members, uh, Kevin Carlisle Gish, is actually, we're putting together a roster of his 10-minute pieces that we're going to do in April. It's titled, I Am Lizard. Very, we're gonna leave very it strange, there. very fun. <laughs> <laughs> very, very surreal work. Yes. Um, so that, you know, suddenly when you're, when you've got playwrights that you know, people who are your friends and colleagues and that you want to support, it becomes very easy to slot them in. You're like, oh, where, where can we fit them in? We got to know Janine De Maria through, uh, the Ground and Field Theater Festival and she's a wonderful playwright operating out of Los Angeles. So then, and like, we like hanging out with you. So mm -hmm. how do we get you back? How, what, what can we do? How can we create a slot for that? In addition, I read a lot. <laughs> I read constantly, and it's, oh, such a burden to read plays. Oh, <laughs> the terror. No. It's, um, it's great. I listen to a tremendous number of podcasts about what's going on in American theater. I, you know, I just sort of try and suss out what's happening and what pe who's writing what and what's happening over in London um, to see where new playwrights are coming from or new voices, just, just to kind of, you know, sift out what's happening. And... Yeah, and just read as much as I possibly can. And then when somebody, the best, the best advertisement, the best research and work I do is when somebody walks in and goes, I really love this play. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's read it. Yeah. The salon readings operate from the premise that plays are meant to be heard. Mm -hmm. they, they are meant to be spoken aloud. You can't get the full measure of a piece of dramatic writing unless you have somebody inhabiting it, even if it's as simple as just reading it aloud. And there's a real magic and energy that comes from a first table read, and we're trying to recreate that a little bit for the audience. It's, it's sort of low tech, but high, I don't know, high quality <laughs> is the word I'm looking for. High excitement. <laughs> high excitement, high excitement, high quality, um, and just to get people listening again. You know, you don't always have to go see you can have a really rich theatrical experience in a really local way that doesn't always have to be a fully produced musical, like sure. Cats or Wicked or something really beautiful, Hamilton. Those are fantastic and wonderful, and they absolutely should exist. But this is a way to sort of get the people in the seats having that live experience. Yeah. And it's also a really great opportunity for us to uh, put a show up in front of an audience and see how the audience reacts to it. We yeah. do talkbacks after some of these, mm -hmm. and some of the material that we do in the salons uh, ends up going to our main stage stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it's it's a, it's a good way to gauge out, you know. Right. You What's know? the audience? Well, I, I would I, I would think that it's a great way to just expose people to art, oh, yeah. right? Yes. So it, a theater yes. ticket and going to the theater and parking and Hamilton is great and Hamilton is ridiculously expensive, right? Incredibly. And so it, it just seems to me a great way to, mm -hmm. to introduce people to art and mm -hmm. let them see a bit of what goes on behind the scenes that allows for that final yeah. mm -hmm. production um, to, to take place. And, Absolutely. And thanks to the city, it's free. Uh, so yeah. folks can come check it out. Um, we have snacks and coffee, too. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, where can people learn more? Uh, BikeCityTheater.org. BikeCityTheater.org. And you know, we right? spell it pretentiously. Yeah. So it's theater, theater. with an R-E mm -hmm. instead of an E-R. <laughs> but you'll still find us. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> Bike City Theater, you'll get to us. So. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Oh. And no, we'll thank see you out us. there in the... In the city of Davis. Yeah. Thank you. you sure will. Please <laughs> yeah, thank you. join us. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us.